Hello everyone, welcome back to my Let's Replay channel. Once again, this is Andrew T coming at you. And today we're going to be doing our vlog review of XCOM, UFO Defense, and Rebel Galaxy. And we'll go in order just like always, start with Rebel Galaxy. Um, Rebel Galaxy, I'm still playing that. That's how good it is right now. And I love the original, um, I guess you could call this a spiritual remake of the original Privateer. And it is darn near flawless in the way they re remade the game in this one uh, including the the dumbed down um, battles that you have so instead of being a fighter or maybe a larger ship or merchant ship or mercenary ship in privateer you get to be a capital ship the entire time but you get to choose your own loadout and uh, what ships you ideally want uh, with either more firepower or more maneuverability so I think this is a great game I don't know why GOG.com was uh, giving it away free as its first game if you buy anything, but if they just want to get out there, then mission accomplished because this is a great game. The mechanics are really fun. The economy in theirs is really well done as well. Uh, the personalities, the voice acting, the graphics are, are, are good. They're, these are good graphics for this type of game. Um, I'm really glad it wasn't fully 3D because when you're a capital ship and it's fully 3D, trying to look at 360 degrees everywhere at one time, seeing who's gonna, trying to get you on the radar is pretty annoying. Um, if you've ever played the original private tier, then you're trying to get in the turret and jumping from turret to turret, uh, trying to get that the planes or the bombers or enemy missiles. As long as you're on a flat 2D plane, then it takes a lot of that out, and it makes a lot more fun experience, especially since you don't have to worry about where they're coming from on the radar if you just have to turn real quick on your camera and see, oh, there it is, and then your turret automatically tracks with you. So uh, the story is, is uh, pretty good that I've seen so far. The thing is, though, I made a mistake on this game. Um, so every time you jump to a new sector in the story, it it levels up all the equipments and items you can get in that sector. So and all the enemies as well in the missions. So I went two jumps on the uh, story mode because it said that the mission difficulty was low. So I thought that meant I was ready for it. But then I found out, oh wait, these uh, these enemies are level four and five, and I got level three gear on me. Which is not impossible, especially the way I had my ship kitted out, but let's just say I had to do a lot of grinding to get money to re slowly replace a lot of my stuff from level 3 to level 4, and now I'm on a level 5 area. I can't, e I can't even begin to think about it now until I upgrade my ship to the best I can get and upgrade everything to at least a level 5 on all my equipment. So uh, there is that aspect of it. I should have realized it whenever I was doing it. That w that's what was happening. I should have grinded a little bit more. But, you know, that's, that's one little thing in the entire game I can't really complain about. So, another thing in this game I didn't really touch on was that when you go to the bar, you get to hire a mercenary ship if you want to, for to help you with one go-out. And what I mean by that is that you go out of the base, and then do whatever you want outside the base, and then come back to it. That's as long as the contract lasts. So that guy can stick around until he's dead or if um, you go back to a base. So if you have a, f a full thing of missions and your story mission is a, one of those, you could do four missions in a row with that guy to help you out, and it it helps a lot from uh, what my what my brother told me because I got him into the game as well, and he's like, yeah, those guys are awesome. But the only thing is, the more sectors you go to, the more expensive they get. So it may cost like five thousand for the first sector and then fifteen for the second. It costs one hundred twenty-two thousand in the sector I'm at right now, and a lot of the missions don't cover that. That's for the high missions, high end difficulty right now. That is basically half the half the total uh, reward money you get. And some of the missions don't even cover that. So in order to make that cost effective, you have to do three to four missions at least at once. But if you get beat up in any of those and you have to repair or your hole's gone on one side, sorry, uh, you're not getting that money back. So all in all, I. This is not a replay game for me. This is a newer game, and I I try to switch those in every now and then, um, just so I'm not just doing all nostalgic games and just games that I like. And I really like this game, 
So I can't really give it a regular review score um, on replayability, things like that, for nostalgic and all those things. But if I was giving it just a regular score, I'd have to give it at least a... I have to give it a 7 out of 10. A strong 7, though, because... I can't really give it an 8 because 8 was really a triple A style game where it's all 360, you, everything's, you know, the graphics are really high, the, the gameplay elements are really high as well, but for what it is, this is about the best st score I can ever give a game like this that looks like it's from an indie developer that has put this much time and effort into it. This is right below a, a mainstream game. This is, to liken it back to something from my childhood, if I went to the Best Buy or, you know, Electronics Boutique or, you know, any of these games that sold computer games uh, back then, and this was a 20, like, 20 to $30 game uh, alongside all the 50 and $60 games, i get this one. Just because it's a, hey, it probably have the box art, you know, a box quote of a reviewer saying, uh, an updated uh, series pre for those who love Privateer. I'm like, heck yeah, I do. I'll grab that right away. and It'll be worth the money, but because I got a free, you know, it's... It's, I'm getting so much enjoyment out of it, I can definitely come back to this game at any time just and start from the very beginning just because I enjoy the gameplay that much. So this is a very, very good game. I definitely recommend. You don't even have to pick it up. It's free on GOG.com right now if you get something for like 39 cents, like Dark Forces, I think, is less than a buck. So just get that. Get the game for free. If anyone's watching this before the summer sale is over, do it. This is definitely a game if you're into uh, space sims, flight simulators, um... Even World of Warships, my dad's really into World of Warships, and I said, hey, this is like that, but kind of, but in space, and that you can do broadsides, and, you know, you don't really have, you know, the the far-reaching, you know, guns that like in that game, but is, um, that, that are just standard, but you can do a lot of good stuff you can in that game that you can do in this one as well. So, as you can tell, I really like the game, and I recommend it to anyone who's into the genre. Anyway, let's move on to XCOM, <laughs> UFO Defense. So this one I picked up literally just before I played it uh, for like a buck fifty on or buck thirty nine on GOG.com, just because it was nostalgic. I'm like, you know what? That's a good one to kind of put in. the The graphics are low, so it'll upload really fast, and I won't have to worry about uh, going to something blind. I kind of already know from nostalgia what to expect. And this game is old, like it's not like Atari old, but it's DOS old and Look up on Wikipedia sometime the, the time frame for DOS, and it's good 20 years ago. Like, a good 20 years ago, if not more. 20, 25 years ago. So, when you th when uh, you think about it, you're thinking, oh, you know, this all these old games, you know, they don't hold up that well. This one holds up decent. Uh, not, not, not as good as some of the other games, but it, it's a decent game to hold up to. And the gameplay mechanics are kind of like the, the OG of uh, this type of genre. Like, the new uh, Nintendo games coming out, the Rabbids uh, and uh, Mario crossover. This is all these mechanics, basically, but this is the first time it was really done. And this was uh, the first adult-themed game that did it well, and that was really well-known and well-circulated to every everyone that um, I knew that had a PC. I was like, hey, do you have an XCOM? I'm like, yeah, it's frustrating the crap out of me. <laughs> you know, I can never get past a certain point because it, it, it is very hard. Like, even on Beginner, you saw I had lost two guys in, like, the first encounter. And one because he missed my first guy and shot the guy 20 feet behind him. That's just how this game is. It is that minute in the details. And the problem at the beginning that, you, that uh, I found really fast was that if it's not daytime, your, your sight line is very limited to uh, how far you can see and how far you can perceive things. So... You know, and the audio clues are a very big help because I heard the aircraft um, for the UFO door opening and closing, so I knew there was one more. But the problem with that is you don't know how big the maps are and uh, unless you, like, scroll around or where the UFOs crash landed. So I got stuck in a grid where there's fences and hedgerows literally cording off this entire area and I can't get to. And then I'm like, okay, in order to do go back to where... Uh, the UFO finally is where I found it. I have to literally move all my guys about eight to ten turns just to get everyone in position to kill this last guy that may kill one or two of my guys in the process. So you can see why it was a very frustrating game back then. 
And but the good parts about it were the base building that if you could get invaded and then uh, instead of a randomly generated map, you'd have your you fight in your base and and uh, like stave off an alien invasion. Stuff where your research allocation for all the stuff you find, uh, your your guys level up eventually. The uh, your soldiers you want so you want to keep them all as many alive as long as you can because when one of them goes, if he's an experienced guy, that's it. Like you got to either reload and try to save them, or you just got like, I, I can't do anything. Let's take his equipment and go back and put on someone else, and hopefully they'll do a, as decent of a job. Because you could see like the hit rates on even aim shots were like fifty to sixty percent, and this was within like you know three or four squares. So this is not a game even on beginner difficulty that it will just say, okay, we'll let you have the first one for free. No, <laughs> this game is like Dark Souls in that it gives no Fs about how hard it is or, you know, who may die on your missions. So, getting down to the, the nuts and bolts of it, though, the graphics are very dated. Even though the the uh, Geoscape, like the big map of the Earth there, is pretty bare bones, it is not, that, not too bad. And... The gameplay elements for at the time were groundbreaking, but unfortunately, it does not stand up to modern day uh, mechanics. So, the 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 turns take too long. Uh, the, everything on this game is made to to last a long time and to have replay value. So for back then, it was great because you could sit down for four or five hours at a time. This be the only game in your library that you haven't beaten, and it would take you three to four months to even think think about beating it. You know, and that's going back and forth, you know, playing a couple hours a day. This is one of those games where that was a plus if you could, uh, the gameplay mechanics were good enough and you had no other choice. So, I just realized I'm wearing these and there's no need to for the vlog. So, <laughs> so, if I had to give this a score, and I do, because this is a replay game that I, that I loved when I was growing up, I can never even get close to beating I'd have to give it um, a 5 out of 10. For the price, less than 2 bucks on GOG.com right now for the summer sale. Definitely worth the price. Not a bad game, but not something that if you played the remade XCOM, if you want to see the, the original in all its, you know, all its glory, I would definitely pick it up for that to kind of know where the, the mechanics were coming from and to see how many they brought actually into the remade version of, uh, of XCOM that came out a couple years ago, it, they kept a lot of stuff, and it, they made it a lot better, but the only only problem is is that, like I said, the, the movement mechanics, um, the time it takes, like, the games these days, you have to be able to save anytime you want, and it, jump back in almost anytime you want, or at least not too far back from the place you died. This game does not let you do that. So... Basically, I find, uh, the five is, is is pretty good. Now, it's not bad. It's still a good game if you can devote the time to it. It's the graphics are dated. Um, the gameplay elements are still there. So it's not something I would say go out and get right away. But if you're interested in it, it's cheap enough. You might as well get it on GOG.com right now. So anyway, that is my uh, vlog review for this this week. This is. Again, one game I really liked and a nostalgic game that was the OG of its kind, but didn't really stand the test of time to, for replay value to this day. Um, anyway, thank you all so much for watching. This is Andrew T. once again coming at you, and as always, y'all have a good one.